want to know where the demon's at? Start doing some kingdom stuff. Demons get to talking and fighting. Don't get discouraged. Then you say, now nah, I know where the demon's at. Then he says, oh, you slay me. Yet will I trust him. And I need y'all to know something. All right. Some of y'all feel like, what's up, Urban? Some of y'all feel like, I don't got to say, filled with the Holy Ghost. And it seemed like the enemy is attacking me. Is that anybody in this place? I done had about 15 conversations this week like this. So y'all done made me write a whole message. And God gave me to give you, put up my slide now. Go ahead and put it up. That you are in the witness protection program. You ain't got to worry about nothing. Oh, my God. Oh, since I came to this side, the enemy mad. Yeah, he mad, but you in the witness protection program. Yeah. Jesus gave me that right about Wednesday. I got tired of hearing folks scared of repercussions of the devil. Devil gonna get me because I done, I done outed him. The devil done get me because I left him. But let me tell you something. God got you. And God witness protection program is 100%. Can I talk about it? I'm going to talk about it, but I ain't going to talk long because I need you to enroll. And it, it, being, being safe is up to you. And I, need, and I need you to have the greatest thing you can have. I believe God is going to feel and touch in the spirit. I believe there's some folks today that we're going to dismiss it. You ain't going to go home. You're going to be so drunk in the spirit. I'm tired of you still talking about how drunk you used to get, how high you used to get. That means you ain't got high in God yet. Anybody ever been high in the Lord? I'm still high. And the problem is, whoo. No, okay. If you got any questions, you can text me. You know the drill. Text me before I'm over, and I'll answer your questions. Let's get into the text. What is the Witness Protection Program? I'm not going to go through all of this, but I, I wrote, I got a whole write-up. Ensure the safety of witnesses and their families to encourage cooperation with law enforcement and judicial system. By the way, we had the DeSoto the, the County Sheriffs here yesterday. It was phenomenal. Our church just upgraded like 10 notches. Soto County Sheriff's were here. Thank God for those that made that happen. Uh, Pastor Coleman and the, the team, that was phenomenal. And so, yeah, cool guys too, really cool guys. How, who's eligible for witness protection? Witnesses, witnesses. Any witnesses in this place? Witnesses who have information or evidence related to a criminal organization. Anybody used to be in Satan's criminal organization? Anybody used to be in the darkness, but now you back and now you in the light. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Let me tell you, the worst person, the worst person you can meet is somebody say, I didn't sin like y'all. I was good. I just came to Jesus. You were stanky, raunchy. I don't care what you did or didn't do. You had bad thoughts. You had dirty, hard, intense, and Jesus had to wash your heart. Whether you never drank, smoke, hold around, don't matter. You were a sinner. I don't care who you were. Some of the worst sinners I knew was in grad school in the Ph.D. program. Let me keep going. Protection measures. The program provides a new identity, relocation, and security matters there, such as a new name and social security number, relocation to a different part of the country, secure housing and transportation, protection by U.S. Marshals. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. I can just stop right here and give a scripture for all this. And financial assistance and support. Witnesses work with prosecutors and law enforcement to enter the program. They are given a new identity, relocated. Their old identity is expunged from public records and is secret. The program is highly secretive to maintain the safety of participants. And so they're there. Now, the, the, this program, compared to spiritual warfare, you being saved, is similar but not. Because the Witness Protection Program aims at to protect witnesses while spiritual warfare protects all Christians. The Witness Protection Program is limited to a few individuals. But this is for everybody. We glorify God and stand in faith. Our weapons are different. We have the weapons of warfare. We have the whole armor of God to be able to stand uh, the outcome the protection program ends at physical safety, while as spiritual Christians, uh, as spiritual people, as spiritual warfare and Christians, we walk, our walk aims for spiritual victory and eternal life. Witness protection program relies on human authority, while spiritual warfare, Christian life, relies on the power of God. 
Yeah, y'all know this guy, Salvatore Gravano, Sammy the Bull. He was a top mobster. Y'all know, y'all know who he is. That, yeah, that maybe you, you criminal syndicate folks. We got everybody in this church. Y'all might have worked with him in, back in the nineties. But, um, <laughs> but uh, Salvatore Gravano was one of John Gotti's top guys. He had risen in the mob and done great things, and he overheard the p- police. Uh, had a, somebody wiretap a conversation that John Gotti was saying, and he was talking bad about him. And he heard they played the conversation for him, and then he flipped and became state's witness. Went the witness protection program. He he confessed to 19 murders himself. He's a bad man, a very bad, not bad meaning good, bad meaning bad. He's a bad man. He committed 19 murders, but he got. Countless people, over 40 people in the mob convicted, and uh, he spent about four years in prison, then went into witness protection program. Interesting thing is he went to witness protection program. He was in there seven years, had a new identity, had everything, but then got caught back up in mob activity after having a clean slate and got rearrested and got a 19-year sentence and a 20-year sentence to be served concurrently. He had gotten a clean slate. Had everything right, even had financial assistance, everything, but went back. This is a true story. This is a true guy and a true mob boss. And it's kind of like the scripture says in, 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 in 2 Peter 2.22, he said, those who go back to their old ways is like a dog who goes back and lick up his vomit. It, didn't, it wasn't hard for me to find a dog licking his vomit. A dog licking his vomit. That's us going back to our own ways. Jesus, when we, he saved us, he put us in protection. He put us in a place. And some of us have said the devil whooping on our head, but we're not following the guidelines of the witness protection program. Just like Salvatore did, Gravano, just like Sammy the Bull found himself in a great place. But then he went out back to what he was in and found that the same people who were meant to protect them then arrested him again. And now he's in prison. The scripture says in John 8, 36, therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. I quoted while I was, while we were praising God, Psalms 142, verse 7 says, Lord, free my soul from prison that I may praise you. One true sign that somebody is in a demonic prison is that they, they went from here to here to here to here to, man, I ain't doing all that. When you ain't free, uh, people going to look at me funny. Mm, I, I look too good to be praising God. When you free, you free. Galatians 5.1 says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty in which Christ has made us free. And do not be entangled again. You were entangled before. Don't get back entangled. I'm, uh, by the way, I'm talking to the, to the, to the people who have been saved a long time. I'm talking about for the people who were been delivered, the people who are in ministry, because y'all are the ones getting your heads whooped on and finding yourself doing all kind of crazy stuff that shouldn't even be mentioned amongst you. Because the enemy, the enemy wants you to be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. The devil can't bind you. Demons can't jack you. Well, spiritual world, don't talk about demons. Your biggest enemy is you. The only one that can jack you, the only one that can mess you up is yourself. This flesh. The apostle said, who shall deliver me from this body? The devil can suggest, but you enact. And so it says, stand there for in the liberty by which Christ has made you free. And listen, when, if you want to remember, if you want to you tell your testimony, and sometimes you got to rehearse it to yourself, remember the whole testimony. You wasn't doing so good when you was doing what you were doing. Life wasn't so sweet when you was where you were. 
things wasn't so great when you were where you were. Oh, oh, look, not, not, I got no amens. You still, you still think, you still think because you was drinking top shelf liquor, you was doing good. That top shelf liquor had your gut messed up. You had farts that stunk. You had hangovers. You did things you didn't want to do. Tell the truth and shame the devil. Your body was acting all crazy. What? Oh, you had all, you can pull any man you want to pull, but they used and abuse you. You can pull any woman you can pull. She abused you. Oh, Lord, have a, oh, you, you was all this and that bag of chips. You was the number one somebody, but you still deep down were miserable and unfulfilled, and only Christ filled that gap. Oh, I know you graduated summa cum laude, magna cum laude, or maybe you just graduated old laude. But one thing is for sure, those were not the good old days. The good days is when you were walking in God. Tell the truth and shame the devil. The world said we're having a good time, but it wasn't that. So stand fast in the liberty by which God has made you free. He freed you from addictions. He freed you from bondage. Freed you from things that had you all messed up. And now you want to say, but well, that, that helped me. Be free from that yoke of what you were entangled in. For those in Jesus' witness protection program, there are four things I want to show you real quick. And then I want to give you something else. I'm pushing because I'm pushing towards a goal. Because I need you to leave here fully protected. Because many of us have been falling, slipping up and down. And you know what it says in the scripture that if you go back or if you allow what was in you before, your, your, your end will be worse than your beginning. That you can be saved and you will be worse than you ever been. Oh, Lord, help us not to be worse. That, that one spirit that came out that we cast out will bring seven more. And you're a worse person than you were when you started. So I need you to embrace your new identity. I need you to resist Satan. I need you to walk in faith. I need you to get support from the authorities. Get support from the authorities. First, embrace your identity. Ephesians, I know you thought I was going to say 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Ephesians 2, 19 to 22. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners. You're not outside. You're inside. If you want to talk about church folk, you ain't no longer the outside folks. You are church folk. They are hypocrites. Usually when people in the church say they are hypocrites, that means I have just met a hypocrite. Hypocrites love talking about hypocrites. Real ones don't talk about the hypocrites because it takes one to know one. So usually when I hear somebody, oh, I'm just so discouraged because so many hypocrites, which means you've been living hypocritical with the hypocrites. You are no longer strangers and foreigners. You're not outsiders anymore, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. I remember when I realized I was grown. I was at, and I was at a family event, and I was like, when are grown folks going to get this stuff in order? Then I looked around and said, I am the grown folks. When are they going? Who going to barbecue? Who going to cook? When, when the, you know, when the, when the men going to cook? I am the man that should be cooking. Who going to clean up? Who going to get things in order? Who going to plan everything? Oh, that's, that would be me? Oh. When I, do you ever remember? The children are upstairs in children's church, so they don't, they don't know. All the children, grade kindergarten through grade 12 children's church. By the way, my wife is here, but she's preaching there. She was preaching in New York last week. She's preaching in children's church today. I got her on assignment. Do you remember when you realized you were grown? Some of y'all don't even realize you grown. That's probably the problem. You 32, still calling mama for rent money. <laughs> Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. That's not my message today. Not my message. But that show shouldn't be her problem. And mama stressed out working two jobs to take care of your trifling self. And you still, mama, if you would have just, if you just, if you had bought me a PlayStation when I was a kid, I'd be so more fulfilled now. Stay focused, Matthews. I got a lot to say. Having been built, look, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. I'm an apostle. And prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the spirit. Embrace who you are. I am a child of God. 
Quit, quit, quit. Well, I'm just new. I'm a new saint. I'm a baby. I'm a child of God, which means I ain't who I was. I'm somebody else. Embrace your new identity. When you were saved, you became a, a, a fellow citizen with the saints and members of the household of God. You are a kingdom citizen. You're no longer an outsider. And you are being built together with us for a dwelling place of God in the spirit. I need you to resist Satan. Are y'all with me? I need you to resist Satan. I'm so tired of people saying the devil, the devil, the devil, the devil, the devil is busy, the devil is strong. Da, 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 da. James 4, 7 says, therefore, submit to God. That's why we fast. That's why we pray. That's why we study the word. That's why we fellowship with others. All of that is submitting. And if you omit that, listen, if you are not, if you don't have some strong saints in your immediate circle, you're toast. You toast. I'm talking about strong, not just friends. And, and, and woe unto you, you go to this church and you can't, you can't get with none of us. I, my, the saints I know, they, they more spiritual. Y'all don't like me here. I go with them down there, but you go here. Then go on down down there. Because you need to worship with the people you're fellowshipping with. How can we, none of us good enough? You that I? Because you know I'm just, I'm just prophetic, see, and y'all just so, just so beneath me. Can you help us to lift up then? Can you help me if, since we so low? Can you not throw us away with your self-righteous self? Because you know y'all don't, y'all don't get me because I'm so, you know, y'all slow. Y'all slow here. Then what you doing here? God got you on assignment for something. Submitting to God means to be with his people. Submitting to God is to be in his word. Submitting to God is to crucify the flesh. Submitting to God is to say, I'm going to follow you. Submitting to God is to say, I'm going to help somebody else. Therefore, submit to God. Then resist the devil. Why are you fighting the devil every day? You shouldn't be fighting the devil every day. Shouldn't have a fight with the devil every day. I've, I've been fighting the devil every day. I've been fighting the devil all day. Uh-uh. I'm submitted to God. Devil, get back. I rebuke you, and he must run from you. Are y'all with me? Walk in faith. I need you to walk in faith. Preach a whole series on faith. And the next Sunday, somebody said, I'm just, you know, I just think a lot. I'm just an overthinker, and I don't know if God, I mean, I just preached eight weeks on faith, and you want to know how to not to overthink. Believe God. See, the enemy will have you embrace things that are ungodly. That's just how I am. I hear what you're saying, but that's just how I am. You know, I just, I just got to know everything. I got to understand everything. That's just how I am. But without, I just got to know it. God just needs to tell me everything so I can. Without, it is, it's not hard. It's not unlikely. It's impossible. If God ain't pleasing, I can't resist the devil. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. Why? For he who comes to God must believe that he is. You come to God, you can't believe that you God. Come to God, you can't believe that your mind is God. Your connections are God. Your this are God. Your this, I, I, I believe that he is, and he is a rewarder. Let me just stay there. I'm going to stay here for 35 seconds. What do you mean he's a rewarder? So when things get tough, when I don't get credit, when people overlook me, when people try to undermine me, I don't get discouraged because you're not the rewarder. I know that God is a rewarder. Some folks don't get messed up because you've made people your God. Now you're over. I don't know what to do. They just don't, they just don't appreciate me. They don't want me on the shoe shine committee because they intimidated by me. Maybe we are intimidated by you, which I doubt. But let's say, let's just say you're right and we're intimidated by you. So why you quit? They're intimidated by you. You're not intimidated by them. And so, so they don't reward you. So what? 
but I know that God is a rewarder. So let's say they are intimidated by you. So you just going to bag up and I ain't doing nothing because you know they don't, they don't vibe with me. They don't like how I do. He's a rewarder of those who do what? Diligently. Not Sunday morning only. The rest of the week I do my thing. Not when I feel down. Not when I just feel like it. Not when I want to get my praise off. Diligently, consistently seek him. I'm telling you how to be in a witness protection program. Are y'all with me? Remember, Salvatore Gravano got out the program and got messed up because he didn't follow the protocols. I'm giving you the witness protection program protocols. This is why you're getting your tail whooped when you leave here because I can't protect you. It ain't my job to protect you. Pastor, what you going to do when I go home? You got me fasting and praying. Now the devil mad at me. Now you done put me in a bad spot. What you going to do, Pastor? I'm supposed to stand out in front of your house praying hard. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Protect them, Lord. Hallelujah. You out your man. You got to protect. You got to let God protect you. That means there's some people, listen, if you, got a, if you got put in a witness protection program, there's some old friends you can't call and tell them come over and visit. Oh! Come on, what you doing calling your old weed man for? You don't need to know where you at. Why are you calling your ex boo just to chat? Because you was bored. What you doing? You know I'm saved. We ain't going to do nothing, but I just want to see how you're doing. I'm saved now. I'm telling you now. I ain't going to do nothing, but I just want to see how you're doing. I'm fine. <laughs> you're in a witness protection program. Delete and block. Delete and block. No, no, no. Throw the phone away. I need to unfollow some folks. You following and then posting your whole life. Look what I'm wearing at church today. And then you like, don't know brothers say nothing to me in church, but my inbox full of folks complimenting me. I promise you don't make the right compliments. Ooh. Then, come on, stay with me. Get support from the authorities. Remember it said the U.S. Marshals and others support those who are in the U.S. Protection Program. The Bible tells me in Psalms 91 that he says, I have my angels encamped around about you. Get support from the authorities. And then 1 Corinthians 15, 57, 58. But thanks be to God who gives us the, through who? Not your frat, not your sorority, not your hookup, not your job. Through who? Our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, since he gives you the victory, therefore, my beloved brethren and sisterin, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. In other words, be stubborn. I ain't going nowhere. I ain't going nowhere. I ain't moving. There ain't nobody. Ain't nobody. Did, I came to this church. God delivered me to this church. I don't care who say what. I don't care how I feel. I ain't going nowhere. Some of y'all was like, mm, I don't know. Oh, okay. Immovable. Always about the work of the Lord. Knowing. You got to know this. Your labor is not in vain in the Lord. It's worth it. I can, talk, I can talk for the next two hours about enemies that came against me in the last three days. I'm talking about some vicious stuff. But I won't because they're watching and they want to be promoted. You won't be promoted. You're not that important. So if you want to tell somebody what I said about them, if they ask, that means I'm saying it about them. You ain't that important for me to mention. Because my labor is not in vain in the Lord. And I ain't going nowhere because I'm immovable, steadfast, always abounding. You know what I mean about always abounding. Woo! Get support from the authorities. Hallelujah. We know this is my, this is my go-to scripture here. 
you unstoppable. You need to circle, highlight, underline, pull this out, hang it up in your house. 1 John 5, 18 is one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. I know I say it a lot, and I got a lot of favorite scriptures. But this one here is cooking. We know that whoever is born of God does not sin. Let's stop there. Because that just messed up somebody's theology. Well, we all sin. We are all sinners. We all sin. We all mess up. Do not continue in sin. You, you and God, you might have failed, might have had a boo-boo, might have messed up, had a misdirection. You don't just continue in that. Not when you're born of God because you're going to look like your daddy. Whoever is born of God does not continue in sin. But he who has been born of God. Anybody here born again? Anybody? I'm talking to the born again. So if you're not born again, then I pray you get born again because that means you already took. You, you're the bottom line for the devil. Whoever has been born of God keeps himself. Keeps himself protected, keeps himself saved, keeps himself right. And the wicked one does not touch him. Do y'all see this? That... Living for God puts you in a place of protection. Stepping outside of God gives authority, gives license to demons and the enemy to take you. But when you stand in God, say, I'm going to live in God, they have no legal right in the spirit realm to touch you. This is why Satan needs you to sin, because if he can get you to sin, then he can give you some anxiety, he can give you some depression, he can bring back the suicide, he can bring back the, the pride, he can bring back the arrogance, because you gave him permission. But when you live for God, he can't touch you. So everybody, knows, you know, you know, you You don't need to be around them Christians. All they talk about is how the hanks come get you and how the demons will mess you up and how the curse of great grandmama Juju, what she did is still affecting us. And I'm scared to sleep at night because I thought I heard something. You need to be around some folks that I thought I heard something. Then I said, loose here. I rebuke you. Get out of my house. You need some folks around you to tell you how to take authority. We don't need to sprinkle no stuff all on the walls. We don't need to burn no sage to cleanse the house. We cleanse the house with words. We can break curses with our words. Every curse that comes this way, return to cinder and go back. You have no dominion here because I have the power of God. And you can't touch me. If they could, I would have been dead. I'm going to die one day. I'm going to tell you this real quick. It just came to my spirit. I believe the Lord wanted me to tell you in my time. I got to push. I was uh, an elder in my church was literally his son died. The elder died a week later. <sighs> Broke my heart. Broke my heart. Elder Jabulani Mashilo, good brother. Broke my heart. The morning he died, I won't go into all the details. I come to the house and the lady said, the lady said he died because he was connected to that church with Matthews, and we sent the spirits. Now, the next one to die, if he don't leave town, is Matthews, and one of his children going to die too. Everybody who loved me came and told Sharon and I, get out of town, go home, because they're coming for you. They're coming for you. My friend is dead. His son is dead. I do his funeral. He was my size, a little bit bigger than me, but my height. I do his funeral. His casket, his son casket is there. I get to the funeral. Everybody says, don't come to the funeral. Da, 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 da. Did some strong, heavy witchcraft. And I got to the funeral, and I, and, and I sat there, and everything happened. Da, 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 and it was my time to preach. And I got up, and I said, I ain't going to die because God told me I ain't going to die. My address is 118 Balshaw Street, Midran, the yellow house. You got to the end of the month. If you're going to kill me, kill me by the end of the month. But if I live by the end of the month, my God is greater than your God. So let's see whose God is greater. Bring it on. I, my wife, my children, nor my dog is going to die. 
And people said, why would you do something so stupid? You even gave your address. I told them, we sleep at night. You can surround my house and do whatever you want to do. Bring the biggest witch doctors from far. But I ain't going to die because my God, I, 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 I just felt then. This was years ago. I just felt then God couldn't let me die that day because the devil wanted to show that he was so powerful. God won't let me. He gonna, he, I may die next month, but I ain't dying this month because I just gave you a challenge. Now come and kill me. And then I preached. and Folks got saved. And then I reminded them as we walked the body out, again, I'm going home. We got a month. And we'll see. Folks, like, why did you? You just crazy. You crazy American. Do you know what you just did? And the devil was in my mind too. You idiot, you arrogant idiot. I'm like, <laughs> Lord, are you with me on this? <laughs> Lord, you got my back? We didn't catch a cold. We didn't get diarrhea. We didn't even have a headache. The month went. I forgot the day of the month. I, wait, somebody came and told me, Pastor, you still alive. I said, I, I sure am. Because if I serve God, the wicked one cannot touch me. I go on God's terms. The saints of God ain't scared of nobody. We sitting around here scared because we casting out a demon here. And you like, oh, my God, oh, my God. And ever since that day, things ain't been right. Then you must be friends with demons. And now they're getting you because you didn't stop us. But I'm here to tell you, ain't no demon touching the people of God. When I die, when I die, because I have an appointment with God. There's once appointed unto man a time to die, and after that is my judgment. But you won't kill me. No matter how I die, oh, let's, get, let's get focused. Whew. The key, I hope this right, I hope this worked like I wanted it to work. Oh, I forgot to tell them what's animated on mine. The needle is redlining, but it's not doing it on there. The key to success, many of us are missing. You get this intellectually, everything I just said, right? You get it. You get it. All right, I get it. Ah, yeah, I'm going to go out. But the key to success in the witness protection program is one thing that we miss, and I want to emphasize today, this morning and tonight, I'm preaching, I'm going to continue tonight, not continue, I got another message that links to this one tonight, how about that, this, it is the one key to success many are missing in this witness protection program is that you must have Holy Ghost power, can't do this without the Holy Ghost, not by might. Not by strength, but by his spirit, says the Lord. I want to talk about that just for the next few minutes. Acts 1.8 says, but you shall receive. Uh-uh, that was only about 50 people. I need 200 at least. But you shall receive. Yeah, I feel that now. You shall receive. I ain't hear y'all online. Say it out loud online. Quit just looking on the camera. You shall receive what? Power. After, when, not after, when the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, don't you, don't you go nitpicking with me. It's the same word, hagionuma, hagionuma, uh, uh, the Ruach HaKadosh. When, when the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be, you see, the witness protection program. It was already in there. When you get the Holy Ghost, you shall be witnesses. And I got you. Where? To me, in Jerusalem, in all Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. What will the Holy Ghost do? Many people think the Holy Ghost is just there for you to speak in another language that you don't know. And he does that. Tongues are real. Some of these people faking tongues, but they ain't saved if they fake tongues. If you, even if you play faking tongues, you can't be saved because you're mocking the Holy Ghost. Save people don't play like that. Amen, somebody. 
Let's get focused. He will show you the evil. When you got the Holy Ghost, he will show you the evil spirit traps that are set before you. All of us got traps set to get us off that square from 1 John 5, 18. But he, and by the way, Holy Ghost is God. There are people scared to be filled with the Holy Ghost. You're being filled with God. The Holy Ghost is God. I'm going to say that two more times because I'm just letting it sink in. The Holy Ghost is God. One. The Holy Ghost is God. Espiritu Santos es Dios. Did I say that right? Yeah. All right. <laughs> I can say it in a few other languages, but that would be redundant. The Holy Ghost be redundant. The Holy Ghost is God. So it's not it. I want it. I want him. I want him to fill me. And then he fills the spaces that Satan tries to fill. And then what he does is he empowers you. He animates you. Shows you which way to go. Better than any GPS could ever be. He leads you and he guides you. And look what it says. Beloved by Tandagaya in Zulu. Do not believe every spirit. You do know spirits are talking to us. They're talking more on the news. They talk on ESPN. Man, they all over. You can't even watch highlights without demons talking during the highlights. Can't even watch. Man, I'm trying to just watch the highlights. Just watch the game. My wife said, why you turn the game down? Because I'm tired of them talking, trying to program me. So I just turn the game on silent, play some music while the game on. I can see for myself who got the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Believe not every spirit. I could stop there. That's a whole message right there. Well, I just feel, I just heard, I just learned, and it ain't nothing worse. And listen, I'm super educated. I've been in a lot of classes. Not super, but I'm educated. Been in a lot of classes. My wife stopped me from going to school. She said, you got to let the kids go to school. <laughs> I was trying to still go to school. <laughs> You got to let the kids go to school. Why are you, why are you trying to go back to school? What you going to do with that? It's just like, I just like going to school. It's just fun. It's just fun just to learn and to grow and argue with professors. And, yeah, it's just fun. My wife said, you got to stop. That's enough. Vincent, that's enough. But ain't nothing worse than somebody who think they smart and don't rely on God. I ain't picking on y'all, but I know you because I was you. I know, I, you know, I studied, I did my research. Now people don't even do research. They just Google. I did my research. I was on YouTube. Spirits speak, intellectual spirits, lusting spirits, perverse spirits, all kinds of, believe not every spirit. I got to push. But test the spirits, whether they are of because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Lord knows there's a lot of false prophets, and they've been all over the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. By this you will know the Spirit of God. How you know the Spirit of God? If the Spirit is speaking for God, I don't care how many PhDs the Spirit has. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. If they, if they deny that Jesus come to flesh, they're not a spirit of God. I don't care how well they're speaking. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ is coming to flesh is not of God. That means your anthropology professor is probably speaking from another spirit. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist which could mean against Christ or to replace Christ. Anti, in English, mean against, but the antichrist is to replace Christ. And what the enemy wants to do is replace Christ in your heart. He don't mind if you keep coming to church as long as Jesus is not on the throne of your heart. You can show up here, make us all happy. We're so glad to see you, but Jesus don't hurt. Okay, 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 push and this is the spirit of Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Overcome who? The spirit of Antichrist. 
the spirits of Antichrist. Because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. So when you feel with the Holy Spirit, he will give you victory over the anti-spirit. He also will give you supernatural strength. When you got the Holy Ghost, you don't confess weakness. Now, you can be transparent. I feel weak. But you just, I'm just weak. I just, you know, I'm just human. I'm just human. That, that's, that's code word for I'm in sin and I ain't changing. He gives us supernatural strength, 2 Corinthians 12, 10. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. When's the last time you talked to somebody in your life that said, man, I'm going through, but I'm excited about it because God must be up to something. You got anybody in your life like that? They be on the prayer line. You need to have a friend like that. Man, I'm catching heat. That must mean I'm on the right track. You got some people in your life, or you got people, they just don't know. I just don't understand. I just thought it would be right about now. And sometimes we cry. Sometimes we feel bad. But if that your whole testimony, always no victory, come on, man. They coming. They coming. They, they coming my side. They, they think if they throw the ball, I'm looking at this guy. He's, he's a football, ex-football guy. They throw, listen, if they throw the ball, I'm d you up. And they throw, they choose to throw my side. They picking on me. Wait, that's personal. Bingo. Y'all still say, did y'all still say bingo? You get a pick? Oh, we said bingo. <laughs> yeah, that's old stuff, ain't it? <laughs> you get a pick, you said bingo. <laughs> Take off. <laughs> For when I am weak, I wish somebody would complete this. For when I am weak, the Holy Ghost, when I'm weak, when I can't do it, when I can't make it, when I can't push, when I can't, when I can't figure it out, when I can't make it, when I'm weak, then I'm strong. I don't, listen, I didn't say you was always going to feel good. I didn't say it was always going to be easy. I didn't say you was going to wake up and say, what a wonderful day to get my butt whooped. No, it's hard, it hurts, it's not nice, but you say, I'm getting these infirmities, I must be something, because nobody kicks a dead dog. And if they kick in me, it hurts, but since I'm weak, God be strong with me and give me to endure, and I take pleasure in the fact that I'm being targeted because I know I will win. I'm weak, I'm strong. He will guide you. Are y'all with me? I hope y'all writing down these scriptures. Well, you know you can get these slides anyway. They're on the website. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh. You don't owe your flesh to get one more hit. You don't owe your flesh to have one more pleasure. Let me just one more time. Why is it all the time when somebody break up, they say, let's hook up before we break up just for the old time? No, it's It's over. It's over. We don't need no one last time. I know I'm prophesying today. I'm prophesying. God showed me my church. Showed me me. For we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. If you live according to the flesh, you will die. I, I really haven't said much today. I've just been reading scriptures. This is the scripture talking. This, this is not the scriptures people memorize. When the last time you quoted this? If I live according to my flesh and do what I want to do, I'm going to die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, there was a time that I had a hard time walking in a liquor store. Especially liquor, yeah, but to see a, a beer in the cooler crying, asking me to take them out. The beer cried. It just, a tear rolled down the beer. and said, get me, take me out of here. And I just, oh my Lord. <laughs> you talking to me? <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? Y'all know what I'm talking about. The beer cried and called my name. Hey, Vince, you remember me? And I said, hi. But the more I crucified this flesh, now I walk in, I don't even know 
this the beer? I'm looking for simply lemonade. The lemonade don't cry. <laughs> that was a commercial. Y'all owe me. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. And the more, see, the more you continue to say, okay, God, help me. Help me, God. The spirit helps you. He helps you get over the flesh. And you deny the flesh. The flesh dies. And you begin to live. And you get control of your life. But every time, this is just how I am. This is, you complain, I complain, I complain because that's what I do. I'm a complainer. So I'm complaining. Then you're going to be one big complainer. For as many as are led by the spirit. Of God, that's the hagionuma, the Holy Ghost. If you are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God, non-gender specific. Remember my message last week, I'm not, I'm not talking some non-binary mess. I'm saying when you follow God, you are considered, you're in the category of a son. I don't even have to say daughter. You are the sons of God. Women, you are the sons of God. Men, you are the sons of God. I am, I am his heir. Oh, that's, that's, that's there, by the way. Okay. Uh, you are the sons. Those who are what? Led by. And notice it said, not by the spirit. Because you can be read, led by spirits, but by the spirit of God. These are the sons of God. You led by the Holy Ghost. You did not receive the spirit of bondage again. It's just like Ephesians we just saw. You did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. But you receive the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Those who was in prayer Friday morning. I always start out prayer with the Lord's Prayer and go through the Lord's Prayer. And, and God leads me in each piece. And we got stuck on our Father. And we prayed a whole hour just to our Father. Y'all remember, everybody was in prayer Friday morning, 6 o'clock. Our Father. And then we began to praise, talk about our Father. And notice what happened. When you talked about our father, then the devil tried to remind you of your earthly father. Well, I ain't had no good daddy, but thank God for my daddy. But thank God he has given us. We did not receive the bondage of fear to him. We had the spirit of adoption where we don't have to say Lord. We don't have to say Adonai. We don't have to say Yahweh. We can say Dad. Oh, you think my kids, I get home, they say, Bishop Matthews, how are you? What kind of relationship would that be with my children? Oh, Bishop Matthews, what do you think we're doing today? You think my wife calls me pastor or bishop? Or her? She called me bae. Hey, bae. Huh? If she said, hey, bishop, I'm running, I'm going to say aliens have taken control of her body. Because we have a level of intimacy. Oh, I hope y'all get what I'm trying to say. When he say, when you, when, you, when you did not receive the spirit of bondage again, but you received the spirit, the Holy Spirit of adoption, you got a level of intimacy with God where you can say, hey, Dad, you had to, you had to go to God. Father, we come to thee with bowed heads, hung low, thou shalt calleth us. Now, if you want to do that, that's cool if that's how you talk, if you're a Shakespearean thespian. But for me, it's just like, Daddy, I can't make it today. I don't know what to do. That's my prayers. And people say, I don't know how to pray. I don't know what to say. Daddy, I'm frustrated. Help. Your child don't have to say help because I need. They say help. They say help in the right way. You come to help. That's why we don't use the Lord's name in vain. We don't just say, Lord, help, Lord, help when they ain't Lord. Oh, my God, oh, my God, and you didn't mean it. If you say, oh, my God, you should be saying, oh, my God. Not, oh, my God, oh, my God, this popcorn is good. Oh, my God, that was a good movie. Oh, my God, you my friend. Oh, my God. So by the time you say, oh, my God, he's like, man, you done, are you calling me? You've been playing with my name the whole week. Oh, my God, oh, my God. You know how the devil will get you to blaspheme God? OMG, then you, then you don't even want to mention God. Let's get God out of it. OMG! Find something to self say. Jolly G. Willikers. Something. <laughs> Find something to say. <laughs> what, 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 uh, what, Luke Cage, you say, sweet Christmas. Uh, y'all know about Luke Cage? What's wrong with y'all? Luke Cage, that's Marvel, right? Yeah, they done killed him off, though. I ain't seen him. Luke K is supposed to be back. For you did not receive this, which you called Abba Father. The Spirit, look at verse 16, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirits 
that we are children of God. That's why, that's why we don't do witchcraft. That's why we don't play or anything. Because when you link your spirit, you link your spirit in the spirit realm, either to demons or to God. We link our spirit to God, and the spirit bears witness with our spirit. I connect my spirit to God. Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Spirit says, yep, that's one of your children. Daddy, oh, that's my child. And if children, then we're heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, which means we have an inheritance because we're in his will. If you're in his will, you have an inheritance. You got something coming and you're in his will and testament written and it won't go to probate it's already sealed it's legal and binding if children then heirs heirs of God joint heirs with Christ if indeed we suffer with him that we may also be glorified together we may have to suffer some you be filled with the Holy Ghost you're still going to suffer yeah those who are godly shall suffer persecution you shall suffer God never said you're going to be happily ever after, but you made you to be a soldier. If you're going to play sports, if you're going to have a job, you're going to get promotion, you're going to do anything, you're going to suffer to do it. If you're going to lose weight, if you're going to get your hair done, you're going to suffer. They hurt you before you look good. Some of y'all, they cook your hair. They got to get it out quick or it'll burn your scalp. You suffered. Am I telling the truth? I used to have a hard time going to the barbershop because they'd be lying to me. I'm like, uh, yeah, yeah. And then, well, then the barber's like, yeah, now you got a gash. <laughs> Sit still. They had a hard time. Like, uh, uh, uh. You got to suffer. You're going to buy a house. You're going to build a house. You're going to suffer. You got to work. Nothing easy. Nothing good comes easy. What, what do you have in your life that you're proud of that you didn't suffer to get? Anything easy ain't worth it. What you got easy? You, you don't care nothing about what you got easy. Well, you work hard for it. You're going to get a degree. You're going to get a diploma. You're going to get a certificate. You suffer. So when you say it in the church, I don't want to suffer, then go on out there and lose and go to hell. But those who live godly shall suffer. But it's worth it because we shall suffer with him that we may also woo, be glorified together. It's not just about me. Together, we go, oh, Lord, thank you. We glorify him. We from the chapter called Tabernacle. He will help you pray, too. I almost got into this earlier. I just, I'm just, life is so bad, I don't even know what to say. I don't even know how to pray. So I just stop praying. I stop coming to prayer. Or I turn the prayer on and just leave the phone somewhere and just go do my stuff. He'll tell you to pray. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit, we're talking about the Holy Ghost, himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is. Because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. When you got the Holy Ghost, you don't know what to pray, but he will make intercession. He will, and, through your, and it says later, through your moanings and groanings. Oh, that was there. For us with groanings we cannot, which cannot be uttered. You don't know what to say. You don't have flowery words, but the Holy Ghost will give you how to pray. And finally, he will give you boldness when you feel with the Holy Ghost. Whew. Acts 4.31. And when they had prayed, intercession by the Spirit, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the. And they spoke, not in tongues right now. This is not tongues right now. They spoke the word of God with boldness. Holy Ghost will give, make you bold. I still can't get preachers asking me, how do you preach what you preach? I'm just preaching the word of God. I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can say that. When you got the Holy Ghost, you say what God said. Where he tells you to say it. You don't go beyond him, you don't go behind him. Hallelujah. Lord, give us boldness. Don't matter your personality type, you need to be bold. So I say to you, be filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm a little, but I'm okay. I believe it only takes five minutes 
in five minutes. I'm going to explain in three and in two minutes. God can fill you with the Holy Ghost. Who want to be filled with the Holy Ghost today? Let me make sure I'm not wasting my time. Anybody? Okay, okay. Woo, I was getting nervous. After all that preaching, I thought everybody. See, see, you know what the problem is? You know what the problem is? See, I don't grew up in church, y'all. I know y'all. The problem is, nah, I'm good. I've been filled with the Holy Ghost. You know, well, he ain't talking to me. He talking to these young saints. Yep, that's your problem. That's why you're so stuck, stagnant, ain't doing nothing, and still talking about God past tense. Because in Acts 4, they were filled with the Holy Ghost in Acts 4. They had just been filled in Acts 2. These were the same folks. And chronologically, this was about two months later. So there's one filling and many, re, we call it refilling. Don't extrapolate that word too far. But there's re, uh, refreshings, invigoration, the Holy Ghost. He will continue to come upon you. You can't get satisfied with God. Who want to be filled with the Holy Ghost? You look around. I'm one of these. I'm going to pray for them. No, I won't need no altar workers today. I need a mass move of God that break out in this place where we come out of here under the witness protection program where we are all filled and refilled with the Holy Ghost. But I can't make you. Because the Holy Ghost, he won't come. He, he won't come. Yes, he, not she. God is never referred to in a feminine pronoun in a whole Bible. And that don't mean he's against women. It's just God ain't no woman. But he ain't a man either. <laughs> so you hear somebody, no, let's stay focused. Father, mother, God. Talking about mother, God. Run! You can't be satisfied in God. I need more. I need more of him. I need to be elevated in the spirit realm. I need your power because I can't make it through this world without your power. And I need a fresh infusion of your power. you right on time, Jamil. Just start playing in the spirit. I want to show you how to be filled or refilled with the Holy Ghost. You already know it. I've shared it with you many times. Guaranteed you'll be filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm asking who wants to be refilled. I need you to get hungry now. He can fill you right where you're sitting right now. I was filled with the Holy Ghost in my bed, laying down in my sleep. My wife said, you woke up speaking in tongues. Because I was hungry for God. And every, when I wasn't filled with the Holy Ghost, every time the altar opened in every service, I was at the altar. I beat folks that wasn't saved. Oh, you want to be saved? I thought you were saved. No, I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I thought you were filled. I, 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 until I know I'm filled. And part of it was that I was trying to be in control. I was saved. But I wanted God to fill me on my own terms. I wanted to stand there, be kind of, you know, composed and strong and stately. And you fill me with the Holy Ghost and I'm good. Good job, Lord. Like I went to the gas station and just pumped me in. But the Lord wanted me to give my all to him. And one day I was on the altar and I, and, and, and I just kept doing like this because God wanted me on my knees. But I was like, I'm going to stand up. And I'm not going down on my knees. And God said, when are you going to let me take full control of you? When are you going to, when are you going to submit to me, man? Especially for men, especially for people who think they bosses. And God said, when are you going to let me, when are you going to take, when are you going to let me take control of you? And I fell on my knees, I fell on my face, I cried and, and mucus came out of my nose and my eyes. That don't happen to everybody. And I wasn't tarrying long. I know they done made, they done made so much fun of tarrying. And seeking the filling of the Holy Ghost and how unnecessary them folks were. And then we got a weak church now. The devil just come. We ready for war. And the devil say, we fall. It does take the Holy Ghost. And when you say, Lord, I want you to take full charge of me. I want your supernatural power. And I can go into, tonight I'll talk about all the supernatural things you can do. That's greater than any spiritual experience you could ever have. When you're full of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to talk about that tonight. But I want to talk about how he protects you in a witness protection program where you are protected by the Holy Ghost. What you got to do, first, if you're, if you're saved or not saved, confess sin in your life. First John 1, 9 says, if you confess your sin, I'm faithful and just to forgive you of all unrighteousness. Hebrews 10 says, when you confess your sin, your sin and your lawless deeds, I will remember no more. The Holy Ghost, sin and the Holy Ghost can't abide in the same place. You can't have two opposing spirits in one vessel. 
you choose who links in. Then remember it said the spirit verifies if that is the spirit of God. And so you got to decide. Spirit of, spirit of Antichrist, because there's either the Holy Spirit or there's the spirit of Antichrist. There is no neutral. Even the devil has brought a spirit of fear. I'm scared to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm scared because somebody done messed you up theologically. You, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, then you're open to the Antichrist spirit. There's no in between. And so I confess sin. Lord, forgive me of all sin in my life. Wash me. Make me clean. Make this place presentable because now I want to be the temple of the Holy Ghost. I want to be the church that the temple is full everywhere that I go. And as you confess your sin and ask God to forgive you of things you did or things you, things, things you did that you shouldn't have done or things you didn't do that you should have done, called sins of omission or sins of commission, then you demand from God that he fulfill his promise and he fills you. It says in Matthew that if a son asks for meat, his father won't give him a, 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 a scorpion. If he asks for uh, an egg, he won't give him a, a rock. Lord, I demand. You don't ask. You demand. God, I need what you have for me. Fill me. And then you open your mouth and worship him and thank him for this, for the, for the gift of the Holy Ghost, that he will, he will abide in you. Father, I open my heart. I thank you. I'm not seeking for tongues. I'm not seeking for this power. I need the intimacy with you that I, by the Spirit of God, I can call you Abba, Father. And then you receive the Holy Ghost. You receive the gift from God. And what happens is that as he flows through you, he will try to shift your language and, and try to speak through you. And what happens for many of us is that we start thinking. And, you know, it's amazing how many of us confess to thinking too much. <laughs> then there are other people that don't think at all. Either one is tragic. We start to take control. What is that? Is that God? Is that me? Is that God? Is that me? Whatever the Bible says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Whatever bubbles up, let it flow out. And let it flow out. And it's my, me to judge if that's God or not. You struggling with addictions. You struggling with falling. You struggling with emotional issues. You struggling with anger. You struggling with uh, low self-image. You just struggling with living saved. Or you saved, but you're not where you need to be. All of the above need the Holy Ghost. Because the truth is... It is impossible, last statement before we pray, it is impossible to live holy without the power of the Holy Ghost. See, the problem is you've been trying and you're not filled with the Holy Ghost. And somebody lied and told us you don't talk about the Holy Ghost on Sunday morning. You wait till a Friday night late. Wait till the revival happens. Wait down there because Sunday is just supposed to be motivational according to the devil. Uh-huh. But I believe on this Sunday morning, God can feel and refill at least 150 people in this church. If God is speaking to you, I don't have nothing else to say. If you're not saved or if you are saved, but you want the power of God, meet me at this altar really quick. Meet me at this altar. We recognize something. When Tabernacle Church started, this is not a church for women only. It's a church for men and women together serving God. But the men must be the priests, provider and protector, must be the priest of their home, must provide for their family community and protect us. This resolution today was so important because it reminded us that we must honor God. We must honor our families. We must walk in forgiveness. We must walk in integrity. We must not allow negativity or foolishness to arrive in our own minds, our own hearts, in our relationships, in our church, and in our community. Today, this was an epicenter of change heard around the world. When 50 men come together, and many may not have been here, some had uh, emergencies, but 50, at least 50 men standing of all living generations saying, I'm going to be a godly man of character. This is why it's so important. Our church has turned a corner. Our community has turned a corner. The world has turned a corner because these men watch this space and see what they do to literally impact the world.